Uh, hi, I'm Mike Elliott. You're watching CEO Roadshow. Today, we're going to speak with Mr. David Norris. He's CEO of Rap Technologies. Rap is a maker of non-lethal security devices. One shot from its bolo wrap sends out an eight-foot tether that wraps around suspects' arms or legs safely and securely restraining them. This small upstart was founded in 2016. It's outperformed the market since going public and over the past year. Their stock, which trades in the NASDAQ under WRAP, has more than doubled since March. Uh, good afternoon, David, and welcome to the show. Hi, Mike. Very good to meet you as well. Let's start off um, by learning a little bit more about you. Tell us about your background. You've led some major organizations like Qualcomm, Toshiba, LendingTree, and Loan Depot. Uh, how did you end up in a startup company like Rap Technologies? Actually, that's a great question. I'll try to make it short. Again, it's Rap Technology. Our ticker symbol is WRTC, and we're on, we're traded on Nasdaq today. You know, 30 years ago, I was in law enforcement. I was actually a probation officer with San Diego County, and. Uh, my father, who's an inventor, gave me, a, gave me a call and said, uh, hey, you need to leave this career in law enforcement. My uh, friend Don Drysdale is the old Dodgers baseball player, and I have this idea. We're going to take this little AM radio. You can put it in the ear, ear, ear. You can uh, listen to the ball game at the ball games. And we we'll sell it for the price of a beer. We're all going to get rich, and this will be great. So I left law enforcement after about seven years. Started that company after about three years, we actually, through a series of events, spun that product off, which is today known as uh, Jabber, all the uh, Bluetooth headsets. Uh, we added another product into that, the same company. It was public at the time called American Technology Corporation. That product spun out as well. That's called the LRAD on the uh, commercial law enforcement side. It's high frequency directional sound, disperses people in parks, for example. Uh, on the uh, consumer side, it's under Turtle Beach, which is more video game. After that, I, I left. I went to uh, Qualcomm, which at the time was a, a raving startup. Uh, my background uh, was a little bit manufacturing. My father's always been an inventor, and so he learned a long time ago, if you invent a product and you show it to somebody, they don't get super excited about it. But if you buy a contract manufacturing house and you walk through all this robotic equipment, all these engineers and all this activity, you show them a product, then they get more excited about it. So I grew up kind of in manufacturing because of that process. So I started with uh, manufacturing with Qualcomm. I left Qualcomm, went to Shiba, uh, worked in their uh, manufacturing division as computers went from uh, being a very high price, high margin product to uh, uh, really a consumable with a very tight margin. So I got to be in that change of that business model. I left there, I joined a company called uh, uh, IAC in New York, Barry Diller started it. Uh, my job was because I grew up with my father being an entrepreneur and me being uh, uh, more of an operational person, my job was help operational, Ticketmaster, City Surge, all these companies that they had bought. But through that process, one company they bought was Lending Tree. Uh, right in the middle of the financial crisis, and I was put in charge there, and I ran the uh, Lending Trades Mortgage Division through the financial crisis. Ran a couple other mortgage companies, and then I got a call from my dad a couple of years ago that says, I talked to a guy, and he says there's room under taser, and after a, a law enforcement officer yells, that there's room for a product. So I've been trying to figure something out, and I got something. So he told me about it, and I actually said, well, I, I, I don't know. And then uh, called me about six months later because he's very persistent. He won't quit that. He says that's what inventors do. He says, uh, what do you think? I showed it to everybody. They don't like it. And he's a little depressed. So I said, look, you get it working. I'll leave the company that I'm with today, and I'll come run this for you. And uh, a couple of years later, we're running a company. And you know, people call this product often non-lethal or less lethal. I don't even think of it in that space at all. I really think of the space as more like handcuffs. We're just restraining somebody remotely because there's no pain involved with it. Whereas every other tool that's out there today for law enforcement, whether it's a gun, uh, a taser, an ass, pepper spray, when somebody doesn't comply, then you inflict tremendous pain on them and you keep increasing that pain until they comply. This tool doesn't do that. This just restrains somebody. And it gives you time, it gives you space, gives you ability to have a conversation, slow things down, which saves lives, and lets everybody uh, uh, calm down. Sounds like a great product. That. that was a long answer. 
No, it's perfect. I mean, that's what we wanted to cover. We want to talk about your background. We wanted to, to learn a little bit more, uh, you know, about the product, about the Bolo, which we you've talked about. Um, you know, what I want to ask you next is, you know, regarding the demand for this for the Bolo, which has been strong. Um, can you give us an idea of how many law enforcement agencies and different countries have uh, have ordered this product? Yeah, we have about uh, 150 agencies, a little bit more in the United States that actually have the product. I believe we've shipped product to 29 countries to date. And, you know, it started out just like any other company that starts out with a product that nobody ever thought of. We would go and show a department this product and one, they, they didn't really care to see it, but they were being polite, so they'd let us show it. Then we show it to them and I'm like, that's kind of silly. And then about an hour later, they come back and they say, wow, you may actually have something here. And so as we start getting this product out in the field and it starts getting used to actually, you know, wrap people up, people in mental health crisis, people that, uh, you know, that um, you don't need to hurt. They're just not complying because they're not even sometimes they under understanding instructions. Uh, the more and more uh, success we have in real life in the field in different states, different countries, the more product we're starting to sell. And then I'd say we, you know, law enforcement, just like any other business, it's very event driven. So you're constantly making kind of, you know, changes, changes, improving to what society wants. But like uh, uh, Taser was really driven behind suicide by cop. And then, uh, you know, body cameras are really driven by uh, Ferguson. We think we're now in an event where uh, expectations of police departments is very different. And when I say expectations, that's really voters and taxpayers are saying, look, what we want you to do is, is different today. But you can't really say do something different without providing new training and new tools to be able to do that. So we, we think we're having uh, you know, our day in the sun uh, to really demonstrate the value of our and effectiveness of our product. Well, I couldn't agree more because a lot of the problems most recently and, and specific incidences have revolved around misuse of, ref, of force as it pertains particularly to, to uh, restraining uh, suspects. So uh, you know, what I wanna talk about next is how has that, you know, kind of increased, well, dramatically increased, we should say, global attention to law enforcement's use of force impacted recent interest in and demand for products like yours? So it, it's been, you know, the, the coronavirus has really um, been very, uh, uh, I'd say, almost instrumental in the business as well, you know, because as people have stay at home, as people start losing their jobs, and this is more of an international comment than a U.S. comment, but as, as people are staying at home and they're losing their jobs and they they are you know they they're going through some mental crisis, they just you know they have no income, uh, they're isolated, and they venture out into the streets. There's many countries that you know they don't even care. Law enforcement doesn't carry guns. They don't carry ash. They don't have the baton. They don't have pepper spray. Really, all they have is their voice. But and these people aren't bad people. I mean, how do they actually stop that person and have a conversation with them and give them the second chance to turn around and go home? They can use a bowler wrap now and they can wrap them. Uh, it doesn't hurt. They can sit down and you know take a minute or two and unwrap themselves, go home, and they get a second chance. So it's really driven a faster adoption process in multiple other countries. In the U.S., I think that um, we're starting to see that same thing. The U.S. has been a little bit different because it's, it, you know, with the work at, you know, stay at home, all of our demonstrations have gone to video. And four months ago, we never would have thought of doing an online video because we thought we got to go explain our product, show them how to use the product, we're finding that it's simple enough to use that we can actually explain and train somebody to use a product in many cases just on, you know, on, on Zoom, like what you and I are doing today. Well, that's it. That was, uh, that was actually my next question I was going to ask. I mean, you know, now that you've you kind of answered, you know, you have traditionally done a lot of these in-person demos. Um, you've obviously just, uh, you know, said that you, your um, you know, travel restrictions have impacted your ability to do that. So these video demos, are they... I mean, that should be dramatically lowering your cost of, of business because I read uh, uh, that you were doing hundreds of these in-person demos. So you must have had a whole team traveling all over the country or, or world. Um, how's that impacted your bottom line positively, I, I would say, right? Uh, it definitely helped the expense structure of the business and it's been very positive. But I, you know, people always ask, you know, 
is the world changing and is this going to go on? I think you'll see us do a lot of online demos, but in the end, you know, I've found, especially law enforcement, less on the military side, but law enforcement, they're all extroverts. And so in the end, if they have the choice of you showing up and seeing you and meeting you, uh, they want that. You know, police officers in every country of the world are basically lied to every day. So they put a lot of uh, credence in that eye-to-eye -eye contact. They want to know that you're legit, that the company will stand behind the product, and uh, that relationship very much matters to them. So while it's been very uh, you know, positive from an expense reduction standpoint over the last couple of months, I see that picking up as travel for this uh, restriction uh, diminish. Yeah, that makes sense. They're going to want to, a lot of these guys, since they're in the front line in the trenches, so to speak, they're going to want a device or tools like that that they can... Uh, that they can really depend on. So uh, what what is the potential ongoing market for these devices worldwide? And, and what do you think will be some of the biggest growth drivers for um, RAP technology over the next few years? So we, you know, we've been surprised. We really developed, we developed the tool for low, low level use of force, uh, you know, mental health issues, but we found a, a large majority of the RAPs that were actually police officer having out in the field, they're actually higher level of so using with people with knives, which we actually trained against in the beginning. But because it's so simple to use, you've got a cord that comes out, spreads eight feet long, it's hard to miss. Right? Every other product, it's easy to miss. This is, it's almost effort to miss. And, and so it's extremely effective. So we're finding that we're getting used a lot more, uh, like probably most new introductions of product for law enforcement, you know, in the U.S. and international. We started out in the car. You know, they go get it if they needed it. Now we're moving much faster to an officer's belt. Um, officers of big department that don't have a lot of belt room, they're removing products to be able to put us on the belt because of our effectiveness and because we're not uh, driven by pain. But the, the global market is about 12 million police officers. The U.S. market is uh, just under 1 million police officers. If you look at our experience so far, the majority of our sales have been international, and that's for the, just the main reason that the U.S. is very fragmented when it comes to law enforcement. There's 18,000 different police departments in the U.S., 50% are less than 10 cops, 75% are less than 50 cops. So whereas you go to um, Indonesia, you've got you know over a hundred thousand cops in one department. You go to South Korea, there's like a hundred nine thousand in one department. So, what's a small order for a Indonesian department, for example, is is bigger than three main you know major departments here in the U.S. So it's uh, we look at the U.S. as uh, the highest, most respected law enforcement in the world. So it's almost you 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 have you have to test your product here because that proves it actually works. And then other countries look at that and gain more trust and confidence in it. But the majority of our sales for the next couple of years will be uh, international. Then we are adding some products uh, behind it. You'll see in our quarterly uh, earnings report uh, coming up in you know maybe probably four weeks. We'll talk about revenue we've generated from our second product. So we'll talk about that as soon as we announce it. We're also uh, stepping heavily into the virtual reality space. We started virtual reality training uh, because we wanted to be able to do uh, conferences, conventions like International Chief of Police Conference and show people our product and how to use it. So we built a virtual reality, three scenarios around that. Well, there became so much excitement about that. We're not turning that into a product and you'll see us uh, leverage that through a subscri subscription model throughout uh, the U.S. and other uh, countries. And then if, once you've trained somebody, you always trust your trainer, so that's a great way to build a, a strong relationship with law enforcement, ultimately a strong rap brand. Well, I can't wait to hear about that and uh, when it comes out, so we'll have to, we'll have to revisit that uh, in the next interview. Um, that's all the questions we had for today, David. Go ahead. You stop by our shop in Tempe, we'll wrap you. Or actually, uh, we're out your way quite a bit. You can stop by and you can join us in one of the uh, law enforcement demos too. We can wrap you and we'll, I'll let you wrap me. I'll, I'll take you up on that. I'll take you up the, as soon as this, uh, as soon as this pandemic thing, uh, you know, quiets down a little bit, which, which hopefully will be uh, in a few weeks again. And, and well, maybe <laughs> we, I guess there's no time frame, but yes, I, I, I would, pre I would love to take you up on that. Um, what else before we close up uh, or wrap up? <laughs> No pun intended. What what else should investors take note of right now? But do you think uh, when when looking at wrap technology? 
why don't you just make the point it's a great brand name so uh, you know the company is not going to be a one uh, one product wonder this is our first anchor product you'll see us add other products uh, behind it ultimately wrap will be a law enforcement brand our strategy is to build across law enforcement throughout the u.s and international and we'll step into uh, the military space then we'll step down i'd say uh, that might be inappropriate to say but step into more private security bail bondsmen uh, probably the next level down will be into uh, fields like school teachers for a wrap product to be able to uh, wrap somebody that's uh, causing a problem and then get away from them. Whereas, you know, the product for law enforcement allows to wrap them and then be able to go talk to them, take them into custody, for example, do something with them. So you will see us grow in, as a law enforcement brand. Great. Well, uh, David, I want to thank you so much for your time, for, for being on the show. Uh, and we'd really like to catch up with you later again this year as more products come out and and uh and as things continue to progress so th thank you very much and take care thank you take care bye-bye you too thanks uh everybody again we've been talking to mr david norris he's ceo of rap technology ticker wprc increasing product visibility triple digit revenue growth experienced leadership and a large addressable market are all reasons to like rap technology so keep them on your radar to learn more about them please visit their website at www.raptechnologies.com Thanks for watching CEO Roadshow.